Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be sort of a laid back and so probably a very long one. I just watched Emily Noel's Make a Playground, or Make a Playtime I think she called it, uh, the Autumn Glam one and I, it made me realise, which I have kind of known for a while, I have a lot of makeup in my collection and in my drawers that you can see open behind me there a lot of makeup that I don't use as much and some of these products I have actually not properly tried out I've tested them maybe once, swatched some on my hand but I haven't given them the love that I want to give them basically and because I have quite a lot of makeup I want to use everything of it so nothing goes to waste and I have not wasted money and today is sort of mainly focused around I have three very sort of expensive, I say they're very expensive, they are high-end products. I have the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation that I have used a couple of times and I have not yet made up my mind about it. This is sort of, sometimes I like it, I love the finish that it gives on my skin but I don't think it's got good coverage. It makes, um, basic, and it's really difficult for me blending concealer over the top. So I'm sort of mm, not sure about that one yet. I have a palette from Tarte and this is their Poppy Picnic palette and I do love the packaging of this, I think it's gorgeous. And it's got six pretty shades as well as a blush. And all of these eyeshadows in this one is matte and I have swatched these, these shadows and I've tried them on my eyes. And the conclusion that I have had so far is that they are pretty difficult to blend. And they do not really want to blend with any other shadows than the shadows in the palette. So, not yet sure what I think about this, but I will be trying this out. And I also, just like, I was about to say yesterday, but it wasn't Friday, it's Sunday today. I opened the Too, Fa Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. And I tried this once, and I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, um, because my favourite mascara currently is from Max Factor. Oh, I say Max Factor. It's the it's the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. No, it's, it's my favorite mascara currently is the CoverGirl Super Sizer, and that one is pretty small compared to this one, which is large, sort of fluffy one, which is thinner in the middle than it is on the sides. But I did like this uh, on my lashes. It lasted. Not sure if it flaked or not because I didn't give it a sort of proper wear time. I only wore it for a couple of hours, but I did like the sort of ultimate effect that it had instantly on my lashes uh, but I'm gonna give it a little, little bit more play time before I make up my mind so so I have moisturized my skin beforehand and I'm gonna go in with my Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer which is the green one the color adjust color correcting adjust and I've had this for a while I <laughs> this has been laying in my drawers because when I first tried it I did not like it and I have not got a mirror with me, which might be a mistake, which is the reason why I'm looking on the side there into the screen. Um, but when I first, let me close the window a bit. When I first tried this primer, it looked greasy on me. It literally made my face super greasy and it did not help my foundation or anything. And I just thought that was a waste of money because I don't really find that it corrects a lot of redness because I have a lot of redness on my cheeks and on my chin and my nose and I don't find that this is that good at colour correcting to be honest um, but I have recently I've been using it a little bit both sort of on its own um, as well as underneath makeup and I have been liking the effect that it has but I the reason I bought it was for the colour correcting one and I'm kind of bummed that that isn't the case but it is what it is I'm also going to take a little bit just down my neck to help my foundation blend evenly all over the place and as for foundation I said I was going to use the NARS one so I have the shade light 3 which is Gobi give it a little shake and this is pretty much a perfect colour match for me so I am excited to see if this will go on today because I loved it on Friday I thought it gave me such a flawless beautiful finish and my skin is sort of textured and I'm using a buffing brush because I find 
applying this foundation with a brush makes it easier to work with because I find it's a bit tricky to work with if you work with it with a sponge because it goes in a bit too thick um, but I don't think it has great coverage I don't and that bums me because it's a ridiculously expensive foundation in my opinion yes you get more expensive ones obviously but I don't love it enough currently to where I'm sort of it's sort of justified the price because I think it's like a $50 foundation or something like that and I bought this when I was in the States um, last summer and I haven't really worn it until recently and I also find I can't build this foundation or anything like that it literally just doesn't build on my skin I don't know if that's because maybe it doesn't work well with my skin or if it's that's just the way it is but I kind of wish it had a bit more coverage so that is the layer of foundation on I would go out like this because it sort of covers a lot of the imperfections that I have and it evens out my skin tone which is what I look for basically in a foundation but I want to make it a bit more full coverage and perfect today so I'm going to use my L'Oreal True Match Concealer in Ivory which is the number one and the problem I have though is I don't have any concealers that match this foundation this is the closest I have purchased solely so that I can wear a concealer with this because the first time I wore it I discovered that it didn't have as much coverage as I thought it would have um, and I don't have any concealers that I can wear over top um, so I had to go out and buy a concealer and it ended up on the L'Oreal one because it was the only one that was yellow toned and not too dark for me so and I can't blend concealer in with a brush with this foundation I've found because the foundation will move away and it will destroy everything so I'm going to use a sponge and just tap that over the top and I do find that this concealer is sort of slightly brightening as well just because it's so light but I'm going to blend that concealer in so underneath my eyes I'm going to set with a translucent powder and the one I'm using is from Kix and I'm going to sort of half bake I never properly put an effort into baking just because I think it's a waste of product and I don't have a lot of money so I'm just going to pat underneath my eyes to get rid of any of the foundation that's creased into the line. Using a tiny brush I'm going to make powder fly everywhere. Just set my under eye, but also run this over my lid in case anything got onto my lid. Just set that. Whew. I'm going to take anything that remains just around my nose. As for setting the rest of my face, I'm sorry I keep going all over the place. I am going to use my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder that I have used up, destroyed and pressed back together to get use out of it because I love it so much and it just ended up all over my bed. Taking a sculpting brush from Real Techniques and I'm just going to set my entire face with this. Then I am going to, I think I'm going to try and do my eyebrows and the, how is it, I picked up a couple products but the main one I'm going to try and use is from Rimmel and it's their eyebrow pencil in the shade Hazel. So I'm just going to brush up my eyebrows using the little thing that it comes with and oh my god this is so scary. I have used this before and the shade match is a exact match to the one I use from Shiseido but the consistency and the texture of the pencils are two completely different ones this is a lot softer so I am always terrified when I'm using it I'm using it with the lightest hand possible because or else I'm going to end up with clown brows and I'd rather not I 
I'm going to set my brows with a brow gel and the one I have is from Maybelline. It's their Brow Drama in Dark Blonde. And I'm just... I was thinking about putting a powder through my brows to sort of set the pencil a bit because it is such a sort of soft pencil but I'm going to just run off the brow gel today. So next up I am going to do my eye. I'm going to start off with a primer and this is from e.l.f. and I'm just going to pop that on my entire eyeball all the way up to the brow and just blend that out with my finger. I'm then going to take my Sonia Kashuk Ion Neutral Matte 02 palette and use the lightest shade on the top on a fluffy brush and just take that all over the eye all the way up to the crease Okay, then I'm going to go into my top palette and I think I'm going to go for this shade right here and put that on my lid using a smaller, more sort of flat eyeshadow brush. And these eyeshadows have a bit of kick up. They kick up a bit of powder so I always make sure to tap off the excess and angle that mirror but they are so nice and pigmented I do quite like them except for the fact that they are pain in the ass to blend this pat pat patting a bit of that shadow onto the eyelid up to the crease but not over the crease so if I stop where my crease stop and then I'm going to go back to the same brush that I used at the beginning and just blend that edge a little bit. I do think this is going to be quite a sort of soft eye makeup. Just because it's a very neutral palette with not a lot of options. And I just went with the middle shade on the lid so... I don't have a lot of options I think with what I do next. Go back to the first brush and I'm going to take the lightest shade which is the one above which is a sort of white kind of colour and dip my brush into that tap off excess and pop that onto my brow bone and I'm also going to take a bit of this onto my inner corner I'm kind of tempted to call that it um, and I'm going to go in with the first colour again onto the same sort of eyeshadow brush that I used and I'm just gonna dab that onto my little lash line and I'm so sorry if about half of this ends up out of focus but that's that's the fun with it I suppose and just going over it with the sort of blending type brush again just to be sure that the edges aren't super harsh I'm then going to take the tiny, tiny, tiniest bit of this warm brown at the bottom on the other side, literally dip my brush in twice, and take that through the outer corner, sort of the outer part of the eye as well as a bit into the crease to create a tiny bit of depth at least. And it's being a very, very one shadowy kind of look. I thought about taking this onto my entire lid for a second, then remembered they're a lot more pigmented than they look and they are a lot harder to blend. Um, but I just put that in the outer corner and I'm just going to take the first, blur, 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 the first brush again and just blend that a bit together. I'm not sure how well you can see that but it's literally lined in my crease and it does not want to blend. It takes a long time for this to properly blend I find and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So I have zoomed you out and I'm going to take my Arteco Mineral Eye Style in 98 on my lower waterline just to open my eyes up a bit. I ended up taking the darkest shade, or the darker one that I used on my eyes, the one in the bottom right corner, also onto the lower lash line. 
just to tie the lower lash line with the upper lash line a bit better. I'm then going to curl my lashes and apply my Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I'm not really used to these kinds of gigantic wands on mascara, like on mascara because I prefer the smaller ones because I feel like I have a lot more control and less likely to mess it up. And then I'm going to go back to my face and I'm going to take a contour brush and my bronzer which is from Body Shop, it's their natural bronzing powder. And I'm going to just very lightly and just at the back of the face, not like further than that so it's not at all further than the outer corner of my eye, not further in. I'm just going to lightly define my face and give myself a little bit of cheekbones. And then I'm going to lightly dip my brush and do the sides of my nose. I'm not big on nose contouring but I just like to give my nose a bit of dimension. If it looks like I have repositioned the camera, my camera ran out of battery, unfortunately, so I have had to supercharge it, aka I just put it on charge for like half an hour. Uh, but I'm going to go back. I did a tiny bit of contouring, but I'm going to use the same bronzer, sorry if I'm blinding all of you, on a bigger br bra. I'm going to use my bronzer on a big fluffy brush and just swirl this around along my sort of hairline forehead area, just because I think my forehead is massive and I want it to look a bit smaller. I'm just taking a little bit of this around there. If anyone has a foundation that gives a similar effect and similar finish as the NARS Shea Glow but with more coverage, please leave it in the comments below because I am willing to try it out. Then for blush, I'm going to take the blush in the Tarte palette. I'm going to give you a bit of a swatch because I think it looks a bit sort of like a dud, to be honest. The colour is gorgeous. And I mean, you can sort of see it there. Let me zoom you in. I don't know how well you can tell, but it has gold shimmer in it and it looks gorgeous. So I'm going to use my um, contour brush, which is the thing I use for contouring. I'm going to just dab my brush into it. So it's pretty pigmented. I'm just going to apply that to my cheeks. Seems to give a really nice sort of natural flush type thing. And I just apply this sort of straight above where I put the bronzer. Next up is highlighter and I've been loving my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette recently. I'm going to take the middle shade which is Iridesc Incandescent. Um, incandescent Light on a setting brush and swipe that underneath my eyes as well as onto the top of my cheekbone and I've been loving this the way I'm doing it with un starting underneath the eyes doing that but also doing sort of the little triangle I did that to kick away any excess powder when I baked underneath my eyes once and I just loved the finish and I think it helps brighten up my face a bit because I think sometimes with a lot of blush and bronzer and contour this area of my face, the sort of around my nose, tends to look a bit dark and muddy. I'm then going to mix these two which is, I think it's radiant light and incandescent light together the basically the two shimmery ones in the palette and I'm gonna go on sort of the top of my cheek one towards the back because I like the sort of bit of a warmer glow that radiant glow has radiant light a little bit of darkness as well it's it's pretty basically very pretty and then I'm gonna take and dip my brush into I think it's Radiant Light, which is the one on the far left. And just do a little bit down my nose. And with a very light hand, mixed in with incandescent light on my chin as well. I'm then going to apply a setting spray. And the one I've been using a lot recently is from NYX, and it's the Dewy Finish one. And I'm just going to 
spray my face in this completely. I recently bought a two-step sort of a liquid lipstick kit from Max Factor. I think it's called Lipfinity. And I bought the shade Spice because I thought it looked really, really pretty and sort of autumnal. But I think I'm going to take a bit of a lip liner. This is my Milani colour statement just to sort of line my lips a bit before I apply it. Then comes the fun bit and it's the ap ap application. I can't speak. And it's the application of the lipstick, the liquid lips. My tip for applying the Max Factor one, because they will stay and they will set on your lips and stay put completely. Let me move you down a bit. Um, stretch out your lips. Number one, make sure your lips are moisturised. I've had a moisturiser on my lips all throughout the video that I applied even before I began. Um, that I have sort of let itself wear down before I apply the lip liner. But this one, I'm going to stretch out my lips, which is going to look a bit weird. I'm just going to apply a thin layer of this across my lips and wait for it to dry. And it's... And you basically want to wait for that to dry completely on your lips and you will notice when it's dry because you can tap it and you won't feel anything and you won't get anything off. And then to stop your lips from chapping and becoming too dry, you want to apply the clear sort of top coat balm that comes with it. This is just a balm that feels really nice on the lips and I'm just going to apply that over the top. And that will bring... A little bit of shine back without this your lips will actually dry out completely and it will not look flattering at all but that is my look I am very very pleased with it and I pleasantly surprised with more than one of the products so thank you for watching and please leave in the comments below if there's anything you want me to do any look you want me to recreate or make or anything like that, anything you want to see. Um, and as I said, if you have an alternative for the NARS one which has the same sort of finish to the skin but with more coverage, please also leave that in the comments below. And thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!